Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now by transcription behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, for under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. in Salem. Denver wants them, too. Same thing. Well, I'll be darned. Lippin' can't hear you? Uh, yeah, old boy's up the front room. Over there. Oh. Uh, how about the others? Uh, Jensen, Romberg, Keffer, and Ramachenko. Uh, full house, eh? Yeah. Well, if Papa's victims showed up here, we'd have to hire the city guard of town. <laughs> yeah. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off the number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they're sent to the washroom and dressed back into the jail clothes. Makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. Now, the questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. Okay, move it right along, boys. All the way to the Who's end of the street. Who's one to hold it? Oh, that a crime? Yeah, that's New good. kind of filter. Now turn and face the front. You got a match? Keep yeah, your hands out sure. of your pockets. Keep your eyes straight ahead. When I come hey, your number, step up to the white circle hey. in the center of the stage. It's a big room out there, so talk right up when I ask you questions. All right, number one, Andrew Damon, Grand Theft Merchandise. Went out in the circle, Andrew. Tell us where you live. The Jackson Heights. The street address, Andrew. The 320 South Kilburn. Any weapons on you when you were picked up? No weapons. What's your profession? Salesman. Look right out through the screen, Andrew. That's it. Now, what do you sell? Uh, food. Frozen food and deep freezers. How long have you been selling food and deep freezers? About six months. Anyone with you when you were arrested? No. You own a car? No. Those are the clothes you were wearing when you were booked? Yeah. Take off the coat, Andrew. Hmm? Take off the coat. Oh. Okay, put it back on. Step over to the side, then. Number two, Bernard Cox, burglary. Oh, yes, sir. What's your address? Uh, 65, 65 Galapagos Street, apartment 10. What do you do for a living, Bernard? Oh... Anything. Uh, shovel work sometimes. I dig. You know a man named Frank Krieger? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know Frank. I've known him for a long time. Turn around. You see him in the line anywhere? Oh, yeah, that's him. I bet there. It's number seven. How about David Junta? You know him? Oh, sure. Yeah. You see him in the line anywhere tonight? Yeah, he's standing right there next to Frank. What? The officer's report states that Frank Krieger and David Junta were with you at the time of arrest. And he explained that, Bernard. Reach me, Sergeant. You know where they were, Bernard? Oh, sure, sure. They were with the chickens. <laughs> uh, where were the chickens, Bernard? We're in the chicken coop. You see, I was out front in the car, and they were in back loading up a few things when the power car drove up. But they weren't with you. They were in the chicken coop. Well, now you got it, Sergeant. Thank you. Next, number three, John Pappas, armed robbery. Where do you live, John? Beaver Hotel. Address? 313 Pakistan, I think. What do you do? You mean work? Yeah, what kind of work do you do? Carpet. How long have you been a carpenter, John? Six, seven years. Where do you work? I don't. Where was your last job? Arizona. As a carpenter? Mm -hmm. Anybody with you when you were picked up? No, I was alone. There was nobody with me. You have any weapons? A gun. What kind of gun? Army 45. You have a car? No. What's funny, John? Nothing. Why, the grin... I was thinking of them guys in the chicken coop right here. Okay, John, step back. Sergeant Carter. Yeah? Number three. Call for interrogation. 
Okay, Pappas, in that line. No, uh, it doesn't. Uh, see you tomorrow. That's fine. Ash, yes, you can follow through on Pappas. Go right, please. Up to the circle, Roger. Give us your home and... Ben. Oh, yeah, Bill. Got a minute? Sure. Get a make on Pappas? Yeah, there's enough for the district attorney now. Good. Come on. We might have a break on George Fresno. Fresno? Yeah, Broadway division picked up Lawrence Sawyer half an hour ago. Parole violation. I think he'll help us to get Fresno. Well, how's that? The Sawyer's got a wife and two kids now. He doesn't want to serve any more time. Hello, Larry. You know Lieutenant Guthrie. Hi. Hello, Lieutenant. Oh, uh, hand me that, Ben. Yeah. Who's Herman Pollard? They had just some Jake standing around in a bar with them. I had to hit him. Captain was needling me. You're on parole, Larry. You know you weren't supposed to be in a bar, don't you? Well, I woke up almost night tonight. I stopped in there for being this Herman, whatever his name is, started needling me. So I... Well, I popped him and they picked me up. And you broke parole. I've been out two years now. I kept my nose clean. Ask my parole officer. Ask the guy I'm working for. We will. You said something about George Fresno to Captain Hines at Broadway Division, Larry. That's right. Well? Do I uh, get a break? What about George Fresno? He's in town again. Yeah, we know that. You want him, don't you? He's handling the stuff again. Yeah. He's working with Gunther, Talbot, and Elmer Brashy. The three of them have been pushing for 17 months. What we know of. Stuff's from Turkey and Greece. Tests out anywhere from 30 to 50 percent. We've got half a kilo of it down in the lab right now. Yeah. Uh, can I have some water? I'll help yourself. Right. There. Look, uh, I don't want to serve two more years for popping some guy in a bar. I did 11 out of my 13. Two more years would break me up. Now, do I get a chance? We'll talk about that later on. I'll go on with this. I, um, I know George Fresno pretty good. Have you been seeing him, Larry? Well, I ran into him a couple of times in the last year. But there was nothing wrong. I just ran into him. You sure that's it? The whole thing. Last week, I ran into him again, and we got to talking. He asked me if I had any contacts. He said he had a new shipment of pretty good stuff, and he asked me if I knew any buyers. You know, uh, pushers looking for supply. Working with old-timers like Gunther, Talbot, and Brashy, he asked you? You never worked in dope, Larry. What are you trying to give us? I know it sounds screwy. You don't expect us to believe it, do you? Well, it's true, Ruth. They said help me. And I think I got the pitch on it. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but Fresno's handling this load by yourself without Gunther and Brashy. What makes you think that? Well, he told me to keep it under my hat. He gave me his phone number and said to talk only to him. And he wants you to help him get rid of it, is that it? Well, he offered me the chance, and just like I told you. And what'd you tell him? Well, I didn't want to take no chance. But I didn't want him to think I was turning up my nose. So I just told him I'd keep my eyes open. Doesn't seem right him asking you, Larry, not when he's got his own contacts. Now, how long have you known him? You a good friend of his? Well, I met him when I was doing my bit up there. We used to meet in the library. Well, I've known about him since I was a kid. You know, he was running booze then, and we all know what he made and how he lived. Larry, a lot of people know George Fresno. A lot of people met him in prison. Nah, I still don't buy him asking you to make contacts. Well, you know what happened up there, didn't you? What do you mean? I guess he really wouldn't have had nothing to do with me unless it hadn't happened. You see, once then a dining hall, about three weeks before George got out, two guys jumped him. Yeah, we know. They began waking over him with butter knives. You, you know the treatment. George is maybe, well, 60 years old. He couldn't handle him. I happened to be standing right by him. I give him a hand. I yelled for the guards. And otherwise, the guy might have been killed. I guess he liked me for it. Anybody else in on it? There were other guys around, but nobody else helped him. You know, he wasn't liked. Yeah, but you helped him. That's right. I helped him. That made you a pretty good friend of his, huh? That's right. And now you want to help us get him? Yeah. How do you suppose George would feel if he knew you were down here talking to us like this, Larry? Who cares how he feels? Well, I care. Maybe some of his friends, Larry? Those guys who handle heroin ain't got no friends. Gunther, Talbot, and Brashy? Yeah, maybe you could get them, too. They don't worry me, neither. But all that worries me is keeping my job, toting them centuries of cement every day. I don't want to go back to prison. I had enough. I stepped out of line tonight when I smacked that guy. I'm willing to get back in line and stay there. You guys got a smoke? Sure.
Thanks. Now, George asked me for a contact to unload some of the stuff. He wouldn't ask everybody. You know that. A plant working for you would help a lot. George is a smart operator, and it might take a long time for you to get somebody in there. I could get in right away and set him up. He's gone up once on income tax and once on carrying concealed weapons. He never had a big rap, but I know you want him. Listen to me. George lives over on Palace Drive. He's got an apartment that costs 2000 a month rent. Pretty nice place. Books, television, couple of servants. I live on Everett Place. 45 bucks a month. And I'm nubbing to get it together. But I got a wife and two kids there when I get home. I like living like this, Captain. Give me a chance to stay with him, will you? Please? Yeah, huh, Captain, please? Hmm. Harry? Uh-huh. This is Waldo. I want a package on Lawrence Sawyer. Okay. Yeah, everything. Okay. Check the parole office. That's right, right away. Okay. Yeah, bye-bye. Well, if you're clean enough, we'll give you a break, Larry. Okay, Ben. Come on. Where? Well, well, what happens now? You're still under arrest for assault, Larry. We'll book you in for the night. Okay, you can get Sawyer up. Right. All right, fellas. Pete? Yeah, they got it all, Ben. Good. All right, boys. Let's get this over with. <laughs> Captain Waldo's decided to use Lawrence Sawyer on this. Sawyer's convinced us that he has the confidence of George Fresno and can be useful in making the arrest. Sawyer's willing to do anything we ask him. Now, all of you men have been pulled off your current assignments to concentrate on this case. Looks like the first break we've had in trying to get Fresno. You'll do nothing but work on this until it's completed. Uh, what are the teams, Pete? Uh, Hasher and Quine, Crockett and Murphy, Hollinger and Costello, Vickers and Manning. Okay. Now, two of you will be with Sawyer 24 hours a day. He's going to be in danger right away. We don't want him to get hurt, and we don't want any of you to get hurt. Well, he's given us permission to tap his telephone line. Technical, have two men at his home all the time. We don't have to worry about that part of it. Two others will be at the cement works. The district attorney drew up these sheets, uh, Pete. Yeah, man. Uh, four charges we might be able to get Fresno on. Importing, concealing, selling, or transporting. To make any of these charges stick, we have to arrest him with the goods on his person. Now, remember that. No arrest, no action on our part until George Fresno's got something on his person. Now, that may happen tomorrow. may happen a year from tomorrow. But we're going to stop him this time. Okay, Ben? Yeah. All right, sir. This is Lawrence Sawyer. Some of you know him, some of you don't. How do you feel, Larry? Okay, Lieutenant. Okay, sit down. Hmm? Yeah, right there. Oh, okay. okay, Larry. You have an outside line. Yeah. George, this is Larry. Larry saw you. I've been uh, thinking about that, uh, you know, what we talked about last week. How about having a drink, George, and talking about it? Okay, George, I'll be there. So long. I'm going to meet her for a drink this afternoon at Amos's Bar and Grill. That's on 17th, right below Grant. Asher, Klein? Yeah, man. You'll be there, too. Outstanding musical events to listen to every Sunday on CBS Radio are two of radio's most respected programs, the Symphonette and the Coraliers. Sundays in the daytime, it's the Symphonette, bringing you light popular classics, and in the evening, it's the Coraliers, singing the songs of the barbershop quartets and men's choruses of bygone years. For truly fine music, listen for both these familiar programs, Sundays on most of these same stations. Slow. What happened? Why 
last night. Sorry I'm at Fresno again. We talked about price. And that's about it. What's the holdup, Ben? Well, Fresno's cagey. The Sawyer's arguing on price. The way it works. I wish we'd get something. Business officers on me about all the men I'm using oh, on this. Take it easy, Bill. Uh, maybe this wasn't such a good idea, putting Sawyer in as a plant. He's talked with Fresno three times now, and he's set up nothing. Well, it takes time. Brashy and Talbot don't like Sawyer. Who's running that show? And Fresno. But he listens to them. And Sawyer thinks he might get somewhere this week. When's he seeing him again? This morning. Well, Ben, we'll give it to the rest of the week. After that, close down. Just two men on Oh, Bill. Can't help but Ben, they're on me. Waldo. Okay, thanks. Keep in touch. This might be it, Ben. Yeah, how's that? Fresno agreed to sell Sawyer a full kilo of heroin this morning. Sawyer thinks we can set him up. Okay, just taking our time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'd like to. Yeah. There he is. Yeah. Hello, Lieutenant. Sergeant. Hi, Larry. Sit down. What do you have? Beer. Here. Drink mine. Thanks. Sure good. Well, how'd it go? Well, he's willing to sell some of it to me. Give us the whole story. Well, you know how I've been after him. I didn't push too hard because I didn't want him to get suspicious. Think, well, you know, something's wrong. Today I brought it up. I told him I had a client in town who'd take some of the stuff. Yeah? Well, you know, we've been arguing about price all this time. He said he'd have, you know, that he'd have to go 8000 straight. I tried to make it look good and argue for 7500 Well, he finally made a deal. Seventy-eight. A full kilo? Yeah. He beefed me up about how high grade it was. Sixty-five percent, he said. I told him my client would like that. Hey, uh, look, I'm going to need some cash. Uh, what's the deal? He'll want, he'll want to see seven, eight hundred bucks before he shows me anything. I know that. I try to argue him down, but he wants it all in cash. And I've got to have it. Well, you'll have it. When's the delivery? Well, I'm supposed to meet him at the corner of Albion and Six at nine o'clock tonight. He said he'd have the stuff with him? No, he didn't. And I didn't ask him. He's pretty cagey. It may be a running around testing me. I don't know. Oh, I sure be glad when it's all over. Who was with him when you talked? Talbot and Brashy. I was wrong thinking this was something George was handling just for himself. They're in on it, too. Are they going to be there? I don't know. Did you tell them who your client was? I did it just the way we talked about it. I just said it was a friend of mine from California. He asked me for a name, and I told him I read him on say. He let it go at that. He was more interested in arguing about money than anything else. Nine o'clock, Albion and six, huh? That's it. Okay, Larry. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the beer, Sergeant. Yeah. Hey, you know something? What? That guy would kill me if he knew what I was up to. Well, you've known that all along. Yeah, but I just began to think about it a minute ago. You look it over? Yep. Doesn't look like too much of a problem, Ben. Straight into section, filling station on one corner, apartment house across the street. Another on the opposite corner, and a vacant lot. Now, what about the apartment? Well, we checked around as much as we dared to. Didn't find anything. Brashy lives over in Pershing Heights. Talbot's got a hotel room in the Dayton. Uh -huh. Some of the others could be living around there. Yeah, but we don't know anything about them if they do. Uh, how about the filling station? Well, it's independent. Guy who runs it's been in business 17 years. I checked his help, all clean. Okay. I want one car parked on the street in front of the vacant lot. Another one in the filling station. You can set Crockett and Murph up inside one of the apartment buildings and Ollinger and Costello in the other. Okay. Now, this may be just a starting point. I'll have a radio control set up right in the area. Sawyer has to get in the car with Fresno. We'll follow. Who's going to handle that part? Uh, Pete and I'll be in the command car. Mm -hmm. If he moves out, we'll move after him. But we'll want somebody ahead to pick him up. I can't risk telling him very long. Yeah. We can all start at yeah. six. And well, well, that should give us plenty of time, I guess. The change, Ben. Yeah, I want that was Ollinger. Fresno just called Sawyer about tonight. The delivery off? Fresno's worried. He wants to meet Sawyer's client.
I don't know about this, Lieutenant. It's the only thing we can do. But I don't know. Maybe he'll recognize you. No, he's never seen me. What about Brashy and Talbot? No, they've never seen me either. You ever been to this place before? No, it's just the address he gave me. Mm. I try to hold him off. Yeah, I know. He's sure suspicious. Okay. Yeah. Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Did that Sergeant Coggin Quine in that car across the street? What do you think? Are you? Yeah, George. This is my friend, Paul Young. Hi. Come on in. Thanks. In here. In here. Yeah. Can I get you boys a drink? Yeah, sure. Bourbon be all right? Fine. How about you? Okay, George. Thanks. Thanks. Sit down. Get comfortable. <clears throat> How long you been in town, younger? Three weeks. Los Angeles? Santa Cruz. Where are you staying? Friends. Anybody I'd know? I didn't ask him. Look, Sawyer, you said this was all set up. What's the shakedown? Well, he, he just wanted to meet you, Paul, that's all. Yeah, I gotta be careful. And so do I. Do I get delivery tonight? No. Okay. Does it? I gotta catch a plane. Hey, wait a minute, Paul. Wait for him? I can buy elsewhere. I don't have to go through this kind of thing. I don't know you from Adam. Now, that's the way I like it, President. How long you been in business? You're too nosy for me. And Sawyer came up with a proposition that he could put me next to some 65% stuff. I like the idea. I can use it. I'm willing to pay the dough. But not this kind of thing. If you want to do business, we do it right now. No more questions, no more stalling. What do you say, President? You, uh, got the money? Sure. Yeah. This is it, George. I'll take half right now. You can give me the rest when the stuff's delivered. Paul? When'll that be? Less than an hour. What do you say, Paul? Mm-hmm. Well, give him 2000 Okay. Okay? When can he pick it up for me? He doesn't have to. Huh? Uh, you can do it yourself, Younger. Just get your hat and follow me. So you, you can go home. Mr. Younger and me will handle it now. says you're all right. Well, I think you're all right. That's the way I feel about him. Mm-hmm. No, uh, no hard feelings about me asking to meet you. No, no. Yeah, Larry's a nice boy. I, I gotta be careful, though. Boy, everybody does, you know. Mm-hmm. Where are we going? Oh, not far. Just a few more blocks. <laughs> you know, it must be nice around Santa Cruz this time of year. Yeah, yeah. Ever do any fishing? Some. Go down to Mexico, mostly. Yellowtail. Yellowtail. Yeah, nice fish. Are we here? Uh, just being careful. Come on. Can't ever tell who's, who's out looking around. Yeah. Well, what now? Uh, don't get excited. This This won't take long. Uh-huh. Yeah, here we go. Hi. Hi, Madge. Hey, Madge, this is Mr. Younger from California. Hello. Oh. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Get in. Hmm? That's it. Madge helped me out on these things, Mr. Younger. Yeah. Me too, George. Oh, just drive around, Madge. Are we going to make a pickup or aren't we? What is this? We'll make a pickup. Got the rest of that money? Yeah. And I'm keeping it until I see some action. I want half before I deliver. Well, you got two. That's it, Fresno. Hey, who'd you buy from before? I had some people. Chinese stuff? Okay, younger. What? Match? Yeah. Hey, what is this? Oh, relax. You wait here. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> You're a funny guy. Is he? Where's he going? My apartment. Well, what for? Well, she's talking about a delivery. Yeah. Is that the way it works? Just wait for George. Okay. 
Want one? No, thanks. What are you doing? I think I'll stretch for a minute. What? I get cramped up. Now, here he comes. He won't be cramped long. Yeah. Hey, what's this? You going someplace? Well, I'm just stretching. You better get back in the car. Is this it? Yeah. Sixty-five percent. I guarantee it. Well, I'll take it right here. Now, wait a minute. What about my dough? No dough on this one, George. Huh? I'm a police officer. Hey, don't move your hands. Madge, keep your hands on the wheel in there. No, no. Sit down on the ground, George. Now, look, look, look. I got, I got a lot of money. Twenty thousand, thirty thousand. Sit down. Oh, don't hand me over. It'd be my last trip. I, I only got a few more years. Okay, Ben? Yeah. Sergeant Quine, George. Uh, I'll take care of him, too. Don't hand me over, please. Let's see about her. Yeah. Okay, Miss Outside. Okay. Okay, Pete. It, it was all a setup, wasn't it? Come on, George. This is Sergeant Carr. Oh. Brashy and Talbot followed out from the other place, Ben. We picked him up two blocks back. Couldn't tell what was up. Yeah, here. $7,800 worth. Look, 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 what good does it do to get me? I, I'm an old man. I'm washed up anyhow. It'll stop this. I'll, I'll die there. Yeah, you probably will, George. Let's go. past the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off the number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call these names. At the end of each line, when I ask a question or identification, call out. The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie, with Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carger, was written by E. Jack Newman, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were High Everback, Peter Leeds, Howard McNear, Benny Rubin, Joseph Kearns, and Virginia Gregg. The lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. Sunday nights hear Lionel Barrymore, host, narrator, and frequent star of the Distinguished Dramatic Series. You'll find the plays are of the same high caliber as you've heard in years gone by on the program CBS Radio called your Thursday Night Playhouse. This year, with Lionel Barrymore as host narrator, it's your Sunday Night Playhouse on most of these same CBS radio stations every week. Dan Cumberland speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>